And I'd like to point out that I don't normally make videos like this where I walk around with my tablet holding it out away from me. And this thing's killing my arms. My God, this is like a workout. Ugh. Recently, after watching my crazy coming out video in which I described uh, and identified the fact that I had been in prison, and while in prison, I spent 10 consecutive years in isolation. One of the viewers sent me a, a rather considerate and thoughtful text and asked me if I would be willing to describe how it was that I spent 10 years in isolation and still kept it all together. And if you wonder why I keep looking down, it's because this is an area where they walk dogs and I wanna make sure I don't step in something. Yeah, but it is a beautiful part. Uh, nonetheless, the question assumes that I actually kept it all together. So let's assume for a moment that I am sane and rational, which some members of my family would debate. The fact is that the first three years that I spent in isolation were spent in the county jail, uh, awaiting trial for armed escape. And while I was in that isolation cell, this was the first time in five years of imprisonment in which I actually had a room to myself. There were not a hundred other inmates around me screaming and acting like morons, which is mostly what we get in open bay dormitories. So having a cell to myself for the first time in five years actually was kind of a relief. So what I started doing was I started studying uh, philosophy just for something to do. And I also read a whole bunch of classic novels. In fact, my mother sent me a list of the 100 most uh, influential novels of the 20th century. And I think I ended up reading somewhere in the neighborhood of 80, 81, 82 of those. So that was a good experience. And there's a reason for that. But I'll come to that in just a second. So after, after I was convicted of the escape three years later into isolation, the Florida Department of Corrections considered, my, considered me such an extreme escape risk that they put me in the only cell that they felt was secure enough to hold me. Unfortunately, that was on death row. And I was in the cell immediately above the death chamber on Q Wing at Florida State Prison in Stark, Florida, just outside of Rayford. That was a life altering experience. Very shortly after I landed on death row, the state of Florida put to death a man by the name of Paul Hill, who had murdered an abortion doctor and an abortion nurse, or a bodyguard of the doctor, something. Murdered two people, tried to murder a third. And while he was being executed in the cell directly beneath me, that really got me thinking. You have to wonder, how does an educated, fairly intelligent person, a military veteran, somebody who had everything going in their lives, how does a person like that end up on a death row cell, in a death row cell, without a death sentence? Now, what I did, whoops, sorry about that. What I did is I sat and meditated during the moments that Paul Hill was being executed. And I thought back along my life and I thought of every little thing that I had done, every little decision that I had made that brought me into that cell. And every little one of those little events, every one of those little decisions all had the same common denominator and that was me. Clearly, I was the problem. Clearly, there was a problem with my thinking. But logic dictated that if a million little decisions landed me in that death cell, a million right decisions could get me out. And it was on the night that Paul Hill was executed that I decided to fundamentally change my life. And I had a plan to do it. With the help of the chaplain at Florida State Prison, uh, I made contact with a professor of Zen at the University of Florida and wrote a letter to him and explained what my situation was and explained that whatever it took, whatever it took, I was willing to make any sacrifice to change my life and put it on a different track. Because even being on death row, I only had at the time a 20 year sentence for armed escape. And I knew that someday in the future, I would be released back into society. And I did not want to be a statistic. I wanted to come out, hit, hit the pavement running. I wanted to be able to make something of my life and move on. So I met with the Zen master who taught me meditation, taught me self-discipline, taught me to take responsibility for my actions. So what I did over the course of the next, uh, however many, seven years, well, 
So what I did over the next seven years is I literally turned my isolation cell into a monastic or even scholastic cell. And I t believe this, I actually studied law for several years and earned two minor law degrees. And well, I have to move around people. I continued to study the literature from the 20th and even 19th century that was influential. I also began studying German knowing or hoping that someday I would actually be in Germany, which as you can see around me is exactly where I am. And so that you don't think it was all work and no play, uh, while I was in isolation, I also wrote several books, which one of which has been published and a couple more are hopefully in line to be published. So I did have my entertaining moments as well. And so at the end of the day, to explain how I kept it all together, I simply learned to free my mind from the isolation cell and to turn what was meant to be a negative, what was meant to break me, into a situation where I flourished. And I've told people this in speeches that I've given in churches, being in isolation, being on death row, spending 10 years in isolation, spending 22 years in prison, was the absolute best thing that could have happened to me. I'm grateful. And I, I know that sounds cliched, but I have nothing to gain by saying it. I'm telling you. It was the best thing that could have possibly happened to me. My mind is awake, my mind is clear, and my mind is ready to make some things happen in the free world. So I hope that answers your question. It might've been a little de too detailed, and maybe I didn't give the details you were looking for, uh, but I did my best. So feel free, please, to shoot me any kind of comments you'd like. I would love to know what you think about this story. I'd like to know what you think about how, I'd like to know what you think about how I handled my time in prison. So until the next video, until the next time, until the next suggestion from a viewer, I'm going to wish you a very schönen Morgen and tschüss.